Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge that makes a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hi everyone, I'm Chen, your host today. Welcome to Lazada Insider Digital Marketing Series. We saw his Asia consumers spending more time on digital activities. Digital marketing is one of the key focus amongst businesses nowadays. How could business optimize their marketing dollars and achieve its business objective through digital marketing? To answer that, we have Tony joining us from Group M. Tony is an experienced business leader with strong entrepreneurial spirit. We a quarter of a century experience behind him cover brought consumers to enterprise in customer experience, operations, business developments, and business leadership in Asia, Europe, and North America. He's also an ex Lazarian too. Hi, Tony. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Chen. How are you doing? I'm good. First of all, I'm, I'm very curious. So can you please share a bit more about yourself and what you do? All right. Um, so everyone, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony Ruotanen. I work for Group M, which is part of the VTB Group, uh, one of the largest media companies in the world. Uh, under us, we will have agencies like Mindshare, Mediacom, and Waymaker, and Essence, uh, which are the client-facing organizations. I've been in the organization now for two years. As Shen mentioned, I work, used to work for Lazada and Redmart before in different roles. My role in uh, Group M is, has been to build an e-commerce service offering to our clients that is taking it beyond um, the traditional media investments to strategy and consulting and store management and fulfillment if they need. So in the strategy and consulting, what we are offering our clients is we can do a shopping shop audit on is it optimized for conversion? Are you using the right tactics, advisory role, or are you using the right tactics and tools on the Lazada platform, for example, for selling your products? And we can also help brands define what channels should they invest if they haven't been online, direct to consumer versus marketplaces, what are the benefits, what are the cons that you need to take into account. Thanks for the sharing. So I'm very interested to know, in your opinion, so what are some of the major trends that you have observed with digital marketing in recent years? I would say the last 18 months has been a turmoil in the media industry. Uh, the traditional way of thinking has been thrown out with the pandemic hitting worldwide, uh, movement restriction, lockdowns. It, the traditional way of planning media was thrown out of the window and brands started looking at how to do differently. What we saw a lot of the investment move from the out, out of home advertisement, TV, radio towards more digital channels um, and particularly the lower funnel because in most cases this was the only way to actually uh, do performance marketing uh, or doing sales uh, in the in the markets but as we've seen as a result of that what we have also seen is that online has become a very vital component for a lot of brands pre-pandemic 18 plus months ago Many brands had online representing less than 10% of sing single digit portion of the overall sales. So retail was, traditional retail was the most important sales channel. Now there is significant amount of brands uh, that are reporting publicly that they are 25% or even more. There are some beauty brand bands that are even highlighting that they are 50% in some markets of the online sales uh, represents of the overall sales. With that, the shift is definitely happening, going towards more digital marketing and uh, diversification. Um, and I think what we see now, clients shift thinking around. In the past, it was less focus on ROAS, return of ad spend, or uh, outcome-based discussion that you want to achieve a specific GMV target. How would you invest? Those kind of conversations are happening much, much more frequently with our brands. And it is that, how do I stretch my dollars further to achieve better sales. Even today, there's still restrictions in many countries about uh, movements, what products or stores can be open. So in order to survive, they, they need to figure out how do I use my marketing dollars more effectively. 
But we also seen an interesting trend, and it's already started, I would say, pre-pandemic a bit when e-commerce started or online sales or e-commerce started to being a trend was the diversification on not just using Facebook CFAs to promote your products to more diversification. Platforms like Lazada is offering uh, on-platform media assets, be it display solutions, uh, sponsored search or sponsored affiliate. Um, and then there is, of course, alternative solutions for Facebook. They, 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 I see there is a more openness to experiment where I can get the best reach, the best return of ad spend uh, to get the best outcomes for my campaign. So I, I, the big change has shift been in thinking for brands is not focusing on just one channel. They are open to experiment, test new things uh, to see what works for their brand and what doesn't work. That's interesting. I think we also know that there are different types of touch points within the digital marketing space. So will you be able to share with us some of the different types, touch points of digital marketing and what are their strengths? Yeah. So every time we start talking with a brand, we recommend that they need to do a full funnel strategy, which means that you need to think about awareness, consideration and purchase part of your investments and the way you're thinking of what you should be doing from an investment point of view you should split not equally but rough, roughly equally between the three funnel or the two funnels i i bundle awareness and consideration into one bucket and purchase which is the lower funnel into one uh, it's important to do both long-term brand building awareness consideration and then of course tactical campaigns to drive sales um, what we've seen work really well uh, on, especially on the awareness and consideration right now, is um, video formats. Uh, that works. I think it's the drawback of everyone going TikTok world where everything is short videos, 30-second videos, 15-second videos. So what we are seeing as the attention span seems to be getting shorter and shorter for us, uh, six-second videos are now very popular uh, where... And they, they are very effective for branding and awareness. We see even Facebook now adopting uh, assets where you can have six second videos uh, or even longer. But we advise that uh, videos are usually the proven the most efficient way. Dynamic ads, of course, as well, that works really well. But then if I think about uh, online sales, I, I do need to highlight that the platforms itself, like Lazada, offers great awareness and brand building uh, capabilities and consideration as well by through the display ads, which they are perfect for. Uh, why are they perfect? Well, the platform has high purchase intent customers. And when you're online, you want to reach as much as possible relevant audiences is proven to buy before. Uh, it's more of building us that capability on who I am, showcasing I'm, a, I'm on the platform, and then leverage uh, solutions like sponsored search and uh, sponsored affiliate on, for example, Lazada to do purchase or lower funnel conversion campaigns. Uh, I, I highlight the, this kind of sponsored affiliate being a predictable from an outcome point because you set the defined parameters on what, uh, how much you're going to get commission per sale, which means I know every sales what my return of ad spend will be. What is good, it automatically reaches out to a vast network of publishers, so I get the exposure beyond the platform itself, but it drives the traffic to sales to the platform, or in this case, Lazada. Our own survey indicates as well, when we survey our consumers in the market, that they would go to platforms like Lazada in 70, 80% of the time. It's the first place they will go to start researching about product. So then it's all about making sure that you have invested in sponsored search because when customers are searching, you want your product to be on the first 20 positions. Um, I get a lot of questions, this kind of, how do I invest? Uh, well, there's no hard and fast rule on how to invest in the different assets. The prob problematic side is, depending on your brand equity, uh, you, some brands need to invest more off platform on like Facebook. Some brands can invest more on on-platform because they are more top of mind with customers already. 
but what we are advising our customers, we have, of course, a generic guiding principle on how to split the budget. But then it's also that we need to test and learn because dynamics of one brand in the same category can be very, very different. Uh, so you cannot replicate. We have some ideas what we can do, but ultimately we need to have a few campaigns behind us before we know exactly how the customer behavior for a, the specific brand works. Cool. Thanks for sharing the funnel concepts and the different role of different marketing solutions playing. So I know there is no one size fits all kind of approach, but I think when it comes to allocations of marketing dollars across different channels, so I, I know you have mentioned there are some guiding principles in this case. So for businesses with both online as well as offline presence, so what is the best way to allocate their marketing budget? If you look at from a higher level, so we, we, we usually, from our own experience and studies like Binet and Field, uh, which did a big study in Europe, which is very relevant to Asia Pacific as well. Um, on a high level, the way that they define it is that for awareness and consideration, you should allocate 60% of your budget. That is to build brand equity, uh, bring, bring awareness uh, and consideration a top of mind for customers. Then 40% should be funneled towards conversion campaigns or purchase activities or what we call performance marketing lower funnel. Um, the question then is how much do you need to invest on out of home media versus digital media? Um, depends on the mix. So if you're a big brand who's doing retail business that your online sales might be relatively low today, say that it's less than 10%, you would spend more of your budget towards out of, out of home activities. But if you see that your future is online, you should start shifting more investment toward online uh, or digital media, be it Facebook, offline activation, Google, or platforms like Lazada, to invest uh, heavily on, on that area. Um, so, as I said, we usually look at the profile of a customer, how they are in the retail, or, and many times if it's they are in retails like in Singapore with like NTUC or cold storage, which is out of their control that they need to do generic campaigns, they would most likely do much, much more outdoor activities and then invest on platforms itself. Uh, but yeah, so the, the, I wish I could give a more concrete examples, but it is uh, unfortunately client-based and then what the objectives of the campaign is that dictates on how we will split it. But on a general rule, 60-40 split is how you should think about it. Uh, and just to highlight that abandoning, there is a temptation during the pandemic to abandoning the awareness and consideration. Um, and we strongly discourage that because that could actually harm long term. You get short term gains in savings and potentially funneling that to immediate sales. But competition is not stopping on building awareness and consideration. You are just kicking this bucket uh, forward in the world uh, six months or 12 months and you might have a problem. So we discourage completely stopping uh, branding campaigns. You should continue. Temporarily, I can understand with cost pressure that you might want to reduce, but do not halt branding because that's going to create uh, a problem for you in six to 12 months. How about for businesses with just digital presence? Do you have any best practices to, be sh to share with them? Well, the, the rule still applies, as I mentioned, that 60-40 rule. Of course, if you're an online brand only, you potentially don't need to invest in out-of-home activities. Said that, um, it depends on what the brand's future direction is. Um, and I would say that uh, doing some, especially if I look at the Singapore market, doing outdoor investment on activ activation of branding brings you credibility. Uh, and especially if you're a new brand, sometimes you build that trust and credibility by investing in outdoor activity. But m bulk of your investment should definitely go on online investments. And the way we say then on uh, thinking about, if I take about the lower funnel, uh, which is more relevant, um, I would say that 
if I think about off-platform being Facebook, Google, and on-platform uh, like the uh, solutions like Lazada offers, I would start experimenting with a 70-30 split. Uh, so 70% of my investments that is going towards lower funnel, I would invest in Facebook, TikTok, Google, like uh, social solutions. And 30% of the sort of investments I would put on e-com platforms like Lazada, where I'm selling. Uh, but I have said that I have seen platforms uh, or clients in some categories where they spend 40% off platform and 60% on platforms like Lazada because that is the dynamic of the category itself. And this category was uh, small home appliances. So that's why I said it's gonna, we, we usually start with a 730, but then adjust based on how the behavior is and uptake is on, on the platforms itself. Sure, thanks for sharing that. Last but not least, as we are approaching year end, and of course now is the mega campaign season. So do you have any advice to our business or how they can actually plan their marketing efforts during this period? Well, they, they, they increase in large double day campaigns. So we think about it, there is four, four, five, five, six, six to end of the year, which means um, there is a lot of activity and a lot of big campaigns happening on the platforms like Lazada in the market. Um, of course, we recommend brands to capitalize on the increased traffic uh, attention that the platforms are getting using the pre-teasing period uh, to their advantage to engage uh, for consideration and awareness. Uh, because it, still the double days are an important activity and customer expects, uh, expects a lot of uh, activity and buying and great deals during those times. But we also always remind brands that, yes, these are tactical campaigns that happens on a regular interval, very, very frequently granted that. They still need to think about their always on strategy. What happens in between campaigns, you still need to have sales. So what we are suggesting that they put as an always on is, is for example, on Lazada, sponsored search and sponsored affiliate, because especially sponsored affiliate, you only pay when you have a sales. Why wouldn't you have it on constantly for your products? What we also then um, recommending to do is to make sure that you are, uh, if you have a new product launch, that you potentially do a brand day on the platform itself. So you, you hijack for that day, you become the prominent brand on the platform to just highlight that you have a new product. It is very important, especially now, with the pandemic where there are a lot of movement restriction or people feel uncomfortable being in the physical retail store, that you are screaming out that you, are a, you have a new product and you're doing some marketing activities. Uh, what we've seen, the recent evolution, uh, for example, on Lazada, the live streaming capabilities to leverage that on educating customers about the product benefits, how to use it, uh, do some great deals with call to action on during the live streaming show because sampling and product demonstration is not able to be done in physical store. Uh, potentially now slowly opening up, but I think a lot of people will feel very uncomfortable doing that. And live streaming has proven in the few campaigns we've done in Southeast Asia, but we have more learnings from China. They are great for impulse buying. Uh, what I mean with that is uh, this and I didn't. I was not looking for a product, but when I saw the product demonstration on the live streaming, I just wanted it and I bought it. Uh, that is a way of capturing additional sales that uh, and getting a top of mind from our customers from that perspective. So I think this gonna uh, having both is gonna always on and tactical campaigns mixed together, plan it well and orchestrate. And on the top of that, what I see a lot of challenges of limitations with brands is they stick with one discount on a product for a prolonged period of time, even one to two months. What we encourage brand to do is when you do commercial discounts on your products, do vary them within one or two weeks interval. So there's a sense of urgency, call to action that customers don't feel that 
Well, they've been running that campaign for two months. I, there's no, I can buy it when I need it. Create that urgency, sense of urgency, call to action that if you don't buy it today, it might not be available tomorrow. So it's not all about, all about investing in paid media. It's also thinking about your commercial strategy on how you make, create call to action to uh, capture the sales as quickly as possible. Sure. That brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you very much, Tony, for your great sharing. Thank you. It was my pleasure. This is the Zana Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care. La, la, la.